welcome to navy officer candidate test prep astv or oar in this video we'll go over math skills uh, final practice test one that will give you the overview of all the math skills you need to know you know there are different versions of tests so learn this concept it will help you to prepare for the test before you start make sure that you have a notebook and a pen so you could write some important information from the video that will help you to prepare for the test and then uh, download this application called ASTB tutoring or OER tutoring app from App Store or Google Play. It has a final practice test one that has many questions and it has also prediction tests. So that kind of tells you if you are ready to take the ASTB or OER test or not. So let's get started. In this lesson, we'll learn how to do arithmetic operations with integers, decimal and related word problems okay we'll also learn arithmetic operation with fraction and related word problem exponent percent rate ratio factorials in geometry we'll learn how to find area perimeter and volume the first problem so if the population of a certain city increased 25 percent in two years the new population was what percent of the old? So just look the problem here. Always make sure that you read the question carefully to fully understand. Don't look that just the numbers. Okay, it will help you. So let's see how we explain this problem. So let's the population um, would be 100, right? So in one year, the population increased 25%. So if you find 25% of one year and then multiply by two, so that gives you 100 times 0 0.25. So that gives you 25, right? And then if you multiply that by two, that gives you 50. And if you add uh, 50 with the original population is 100, that gives you 150. So that means the new population was 150% of old one. Next problem. What is the area of a triangle with a base 9 and a height of 25. So let me just give you an advice. Anytime if you have a geometric figure, try to draw that. It will make your life much more easier, okay? So let's do that. So the base is uh, 9, height is 25, right? So you know the area of a triangle is uh, base time height divided by 2. So the area equal 1 half base time height let's see how we did this problem so here you could see here exactly what i um did previous slide um half time base time height so one half times nine times 25 so um 25 times nine and then divided by two that gives you 112.5 square feet so that is the correct answer next problem what is the volume of a rectangular box that has length of nine unit with four unit and a height uh, five units. So as I said, so just let's draw a rectangular box, right? So that will help you to understand the problem. That is the most important thing because you're not gonna get like exactly same problem, but it will be all similar concept. So if we draw that, so um, length is nine, width is four, height is five, right? So use that, the volume will be length time, width time, height. So multiply nine times five times, uh, nine times four times five, that gives you 180 cubic unit because the unit of the volume is cubic, okay? It could be cubic feet, cubic meter, cubic inch, whatever, okay? Next problem, the perpendicular of two sides of a right triangle have the length six and eight units. So um, length of six unit and eight units. So let's do that. Let me just draw that. So it has, so you could write anywhere you want eight and six, eight and six. You have to find the hypotenuse, right? So this is the Pythagorean theorem. You have learned that so the, the Pythagorean theorem says like a square plus b square equal to c square, right? So, um, you could do the exactly same way so that gives you x here 
equal to square root over 80 square plus 6 square, right? So let's see here what we did exactly same thing 80 square plus 60 square gives you square root over 100 and if you simplify that that gives you 10 units. Next problem what is the square root of 81? So you know square root over 81 is very very simple is 9 right? So that means a number multiplied by itself gives you the square root of that particular number right? 9 times 9 so you might get like a little bit harder one in the actual test but you will see that type of problem in the actual test. So you can see here square root over um, 81 gives you 9 so the 9 is the correct answer. So what is the value of 6 factorial? So a lot of people they don't know they think like this exclamation sign so that is actually called factorial right. So the formula is if n factorial will be um, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 da, 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 right so same way so if you uh, do that let's see how we do that so any time factor any factorial means you have to multiply that number until 1 so that 1 2 3 4 5 6 so if you multiply all them together um, that gives you 720 so that is the correct answer there are many problems sometimes you might see like 7 factorial over um, 5 factorial right so you could do this problem easy way so 6 factorial is actually 6 times 5 factorial and 5 factorial here you could cancel out so the answer is 6 so that's the easiest and shortcut way to do that so make sure that you learn this next problem because of a flu epidemic 36 students are absent if this is one sixth of the total student. What is the total total school student population, right? So let's let's read the question one more time. Okay, take time and read it to see that. So um, this question is a little bit tricky. So you see this um, one sixth is the um, the population of the whole um, student, right? So what you could do, so say like the total population is X whatever you find x a b c so one sixth of x gives you 36 so this 36 is actually um absent not all the student is 36 so let's make sure that you read the question carefully what they are exactly asking not just looking at the numbers so if you solve that cross multiply that that gives you x equal to um 216 so there are 216 student in the school one sixth were absent so that is um, 36. If you find 1 sixth of 216, that gives you 36. Next problem. John has saved money in his piggy bank over the winter. He wants to buy a $30 computer game. If he has 8 dimes, 25 nickels, and 10 pennies, how much more does he need to borrow from his dad to buy the game so you could see it's very simple so he has eight dimes right so eight dimes is how much is that eight dimes eight times ten that gives you 80 cent and then 25 nickels so if you multiply 25 with 0 0.05 that gives you one dollar 25 cents and he has also 10 pennies so that is um 10 times 0 0.1 that gives you 10 cents right and if you add them up, so that gives you two dollar and um, fifteen cent. And but he needs thirty dollar, right? So if you subtract from thirty, that gives you twenty seven dollar and eighty five cents. Next problem: Make sure that you read the question carefully before you attempt to solving it. Okay? So the problem is a pet store owner set the price of a cat food at fifty percent above its cost when it did not sell the price was reduced by 20 percent to 12 dollar what was the cost of the store owner for a bag of cat food right so this is a very important question so you might see this question many times in the um the test in different versions of upset candidate test right so let's do that so say like the uh, original owner's cost was um was x dollar right 
and selling price is equal original price plus profit so 50 percent profit here right so if you do that x plus 0 0.5 that gives you 1.5 x right now this uh 20 percent off 20 percent off on that that is 1.5 x so if you do that if you subtract 20 percent of that that gives you 1.5 x minus 0 0.20 times 1.5 that is equal to 12 dollar right using that relation this could say here um 1.2 x equal to 12 dollar and then if you solve for x that gives you 10 right so the correct answer was um 10 dollar right so the owner actually buy the um the cat food with 10 dollar with 50 percent above the price and then bring it down to 20 percent and that was 12 dollar right so you could do that Next problem, a student is studied for 18 hours in 7 days. If he wanted to study an average of 2 hours per day for 14 hours, how many hours does he need to study for the next 7 days? So let's see how to do this problem. So he studied 2 hours uh, for 14 days, right? So if you multiply um, 2 hour times 14 that gives you 28 hours right so that is he needs to study 28 hours but he already did 18 hours so he covered 18 hours so what is 18 hours here right here right so if you subtract 18 hours from 28 hours so that is 10 hour he has to go more in order to make the average 2 hour per day for 14 days Next problem, on Monday, the water was shut down three times. That was one quarter hour, two third hour, and one and three fourth hours respectively. How long it will? So, you know, it's very simple. Is all, you have to add all together, okay? So let's do that. So anytime you add the uh, fraction, what you have to do, make this mixed number into improper fraction here. So that gives you four times four plus three is seven over Four. So now once you have like all this pure fraction, then find the common denominator. So three, four, three, four, the common denominator is 12. You see here 12. So now you have to find the equivalent fraction. So you have to multiply that by three because three times four is 12. Three here, multiply that by four, that by four, that by three, that by three. So that gives you three over 12, eight over 12 and 21 over 12 if you add them up that gives you 32 over 12 and if you reduce it that gives you 8 over 3 and if you uh, make this improper fraction into a mixed number that gives you 2 and 2 thirds so make sure that you write that question on your notebook and practice problem number 12 John earned $60 and 80 percent for working 12 hours during the last week right um how much did he earn per hour what do you have to do it's very simple you have to divide but if you don't know how to divide a decimal you just need to refresh a little bit so let me just do it okay so 12 with 60.84 right so 12 goes into 60 is clear is um five times so five times 12 is 60 right now move the decimal on the top and bring this eight down you could bring one digit at a time right and now you cannot divide 12 um, 8 by 12 right so what you could do here you need to put a desk zero in the top then you could bring a four in down because we could bring one digit at a time now 12 goes into 84 how many times seven times so seven times 12 is 84 right so that is the correct answer next problem a box of nail weighs one and five over six pound. What is the total weight of 12 box of nails? So the, the purpose of doing that to refresh your, um, uh, the multiplication um, steps, right? So what do you have to do? You have to multiply that. So let's do that. So as I said, always, if you have a, a mixed number, always need to make this mixed number into improper fraction that we did here and multiply by 12. So when you multiply, 
uh, multiply top to top, bottom to bottom, and then if you divide that, that it gives you 22 pounds. Next problem, a five foot post cast, eight foot shadow. A nearby tree cast 48 feet shadow, how tall that tree is. Okay, so you could do here, let me show you a uh, picture here. So this is the tree here, um, five foot, eight foot shadow, right? So the shadow is always, um, this is tree, this is shadow, right? So what you could do, you could use a um, uh, formula, you know, that we did before, part over whole equal to part over whole, right? So this is all kind of unit price related problem or proportion. You could use this formula to solve. So it will really, really help you. So five foot um, tree cast eight foot shadows, right? So what you could do here, so five over eight equal to ace over 48. So now you could see here tree, um, tree, shadow, tree, shadow, right? So now what you could do, you could cross multiply. So if you cross multiply, so that gives you eight ace equal to um, five times 48. And if you divide both sides by eight, so that gives you six, so six times five is 30. So the correct answer is 30. Next problem, a traveler drove 150 miles at 50 miles per hour and then 160 miles at 40 miles per hour. How many hours did the driver take all together, right? So um, this problem a lot of times you see in the actual test. So let's solve that. So the first, what you have to do, how long it take um, 150 mile if he drove at a six, uh, 50 mile an hour. So the T1 is 150 divided by a 50 that gives you um, three hours. And then T2 will be 160 divided by 40 gives you four hours. So this is the formula to find the speed distance over time or time equal to distance over speed. So if you add them up, so that gives you seven hours. So download this application called OAR Tutoring or ASTB Tutoring and practice final practice test one and take a practice test to make sure that you get 80% or higher. So that will help you to prepare for the test.